and a duration slash convexity approach. On this slide, I just have some high level points and in subsequent slides, we'll get into the details. But in terms of the basic points, when we talk about a full valuation approach, we need to know that it provides precise values. So that's an advantage. The full valuation approach can deal with both parallel as well as non-parallel shifts in the yield curve. So that's also an advantage. The disadvantage is that when you have a large complex portfolio then coming up then using the full valuation approach can be time consuming and potentially we might have to model many different scenarios so if you are just talking about the full valuation approach for one simple straight bond then this is not an issue but for a complex portfolio with many different kinds of bonds which might include bonds with embedded options bonds with prepayment options uh, various kinds of amortizing bonds then it can become a little tedious because we have to model many different scenarios so that would go down as a disadvantage of the full valuation approach the other major approach is called the duration slash convexity approach this method provides a nice approximation in other words it gives us a uh, approximate sensitivity of bond values to changes in yield to maturity it is a simple measure of interest rate risk in terms of disadvantages this method assumes parallel shifts in the yield curve so if we have a non-parallel shift in the yield curve then that's a bit of an issue for this method so now let's first talk about a full valuation approach and the idea here is very simple let's say that you have a bond portfolio which consists of let's say bond a and bond b so bond a and bond b and i am basing this example on exhibit 2 in the curriculum which is on page 610 of the 2011 curriculum but the idea is very simple let's say that at the at the current point in time let's say that we have a certain yield in the market and if given current yields we have the value of bond a is equal to 100 and the value of bond b is equal to 100 and 20. So this is the let's say the total valuation of bond market value of bond A and market value of bond B are un under the current circumstances. Now let's say that we create now different scenarios. So in scenario 1 we say that interest rates go up by 50 basis points. So when interest rates go up by 50 basis points what will happen to the value for bond A and bond B? The answer is when interest rates go up by 50 basis points, obviously the values of bond, bonds A and B will come down. So let's say that bond A comes down to 95 and let's say that bond B comes down to 115. So that means that the total value of our portfolio, which initially was 220 now when interest rates go up the value of that portfolio is now down to 210 so we can simply say that with a 50 basis points rise in portfolio the value of our portfolio comes down by 10 and obviously we can also calculate in percentage terms what this is happening note that these values are calculated based on let's say uh, a precise revaluation of the bonds given the higher interest rates we can then take a scenario two where we say that interest rates are now up by 100 basis points then again we would come up with the new values let's say when interest rates go up to 100 basis points we have a new value for for bond a a new value for bond b and i'm just making up numbers here let's say that bond b 
now comes down to approximately 90 and bond I'm sorry bond A comes down to 90 bond B comes down approximately to let's say 110 so now our bond value is down to so this whole thing is now down to 200 so these are just made up numbers but the point to illustrate here is in the full valuation approach we simply take uh, give the interest rates a shock which means that we assume that interest rates here have increased by 100 basis points and then recalculate the value of all the bonds in the portfolio add it up get our portfolio value and and that essentially shows the impact of changes in interest rates or potential changes in interest rates while this example was roughly based on what what we have in the curriculum but uh, the numbers are different and they are, uh, they are just a, a simplified form but in terms of understanding the concept what has been explained here is fundamentally what you need to know. Now we are going to talk about computing effective duration and we saw this earlier in the reading on, on risks of investing in fixed income securities but uh, the formula that you see here is extremely important and this formula is effective duration is v minus minus v plus over 2 v naught delta y you need to understand exactly what these terms mean and how to calculate them so let's say that we are looking at the value or, or price sometimes the y-axis is called the price axis sometimes it's called the value axis so this is the price or value of your fixed income security and let's say that the y axis represents various yield to yields to maturity and we are basically uh, uh, plotting the price yield curve here so let's say that for a given curve our price yield looks like this and assume that when we start let's say that the yield is 8% and at a yield of 8% let's say that the bond is at par par value let's say is 100 the way we calculate effective duration is let's say that we increase interest rates by 50 basis points so what that means this delta y so we say that delta y is equal to 50 basis points 50 basis points remember is equal to 0.5% which is equal to 0 0.005 so if let's say interest rates go up by 50 basis points then our interest rate here is or yield is 8.5% at a yield of 8.5% let's say that the bond price comes down to 99 so when we increase the interest rate price comes down what if the interest rate is decreased by 0.5 percent then we are here at 7.5 percent and let's say that at this price assume that the uh, price at, at this yield of 7.5 let's say that the price of the bond becomes 102 now in terms of plugging into the formula the v minus minus means that we reduced the interest rate by delta y this is the value when we in reduce the interest interest rate by by delta y and in our example that's 102 so v minus is 102 minus v plus is the value of the bond when the interest rate is increased by delta y in our example that's the 99 so 102 minus 99 over 2 multiply by v naught is the original value of the bond which is 100 into delta y where delta y is expressed as a decimal so as a decimal delta y is 0 0.005 so 0 0.005 you plug in or you solve this and you will get your effective duration is 3 so what we are effectively saying is that at this point where yield is 8% and the bond value is 100 the effective duration is 3 
which means that a 1% change in yield will have approximately a 3% impact on the bond value. For you, it is extremely important to memorize this formula and understand what every term means in this formula and be able to plug in numbers and calculate effective duration. This is a very high probability uh, question on the exam. So now let's talk about the concept of convexity and convexity adjustment. So continuing with the price versus yield curve for a bond, let's just plot this out again. So let's say that our price yield curve looks like this. And just continuing for a minute with the earlier example, let's say that we are talking about this point where the yield is equal to 8% and the price of the bond is equal to let's say 100 which is par value and what we what we said earlier was that we calculated a duration is equal to 3 let us make sure we understand what this implies what the duration of 3 means that if our yield goes up by 1% then our bond price will go down by 3% and if the yield, so let's just draw that first, we essentially are looking at or describing the duration 3 as the slope at this point in time. So what we are saying is if the yield goes up by 1%, so the yield goes from say 8 to 9, then what we are saying is so yield goes from 8 to 9%. 1% increase in yield and we say that the according to the simplified duration measure we say that the price will come down by so the price comes down by 3% and what if the yield goes down by 1% so if we go from 8% down to 7% then according to the simplified duration measure then we we again looking at this straight line we expect the price to go up by three percent so when the yield comes down to seven percent according to the duration approximation the price will go up by three percent to 103 and when the yield goes from eight to nine percent we expect the price to come down by three percent now this simplified measure of duration ignores the fact that our curve is convex and why do we call this convex we call it convex because we assume that we are sitting here at the origin and looking at the curve looking at the curve from the origin it appears so looking from here the curve appears convex and essentially convexity is a measure of the curvature of this of this price yield curve so the issue that we now face is is convexity good or is convexity bad for a investor and the way we can look at this is as follows actually i will make a statement that convexity is good for the investor and now i will explain why look at what happens when the interest rate goes up if you are a fixed income investor when interest rates go up that is bad news so look at what happens when interest rates go up by say 1% the value of the bond falls so let's say initially the value of the bond was at 100 the value of the bond will fall from 100 down to this point A and notice that this decrease in value from 100 down to A is less than 3% because uh, this this line here represents a 3% decrease so when bad things happen ie interest rates going up the bond value falls which is what you expect but the bond value falls by less than 3% on the other hand when good things happen and if you are a fixed income investor good things happening means interest rates going down when interest rates go down by 1% then notice that the bond price goes up by more than 3%. This point here 
represented a 3% increase but the actual bond price is at B and notice that point B is above 3 so when good things happen the increase in price is more than 3% when bad things happen or equally bad things happen in terms of the yield going up by 1% bond value falls but by less than 3% so this benefit is because of the convexity of the price yield curve so now the point is how do we make an adjustment for that convexity and to illustrate this point I am going to use a different color now so notice that in both situations when interest rate goes up as well as when interest rate goes down we need to add a certain amount to the value that we calculate using duration so first look at the situation where interest rates go up when interest rates go up we have shown that the price according to this simple duration measure comes down by 3% which is shown here however because of convexity we need to add a certain amount that certain amount is called a convexity adjustment similarly when interest rates go down from 8% to 7% the simple duration measure tells us that prices go up by 3% but again we need to add a certain adjustment called the convexity adjustment shown by this blue line over here so in both cases when yield goes up and when yield goes down we need to add a convexity adjustment to the simplified number that is given to us by the duration measure so the next question then becomes what is the convexity adjustment and the answer is that convexity adjustment is calculated as the convexity of the curve times delta y squared the convexity of this given curve will be given to you most probably on the exam and let's say that the convexity of this curve is equal to 60 so 60 is just a measure of the convexity or curvature we don't need to get deep into the interpretation of this but if you have another curve that has a convexity of 70 that simply means that it is more curved than this one if you have a convexity of 40 that would mean it is less curved than this one in any case to calculate the convexity adjustment you simply say that it is equal to c times delta y squared now you need to be careful about the delta y the delta y is written as a decimal in this case the delta y is the change in yield which is one percent the percent one percent written as a decimal is 0 0.01 so so essentially this becomes 60 into 0 0.01 squared and when you multiply this out you will get 60 so you essentially after doing these calculations you get 60 into 0 0.0001 which is equal to 0 0.006 which is equal to 0 0.6 percent so now what we are saying is that in both cases we make this convexity adjustment so when the yield goes up by 1% the price goes down by 3% plus we are adding this convexity adjustment that we now know is 0.6% so effectively we are then saying when we factor in the convexity of the curve we then say that when the yield goes up by 1% the price should go down by 3% and then make the convexity adjustment so the overall impact will be down by 2.4 percent so this makes more sense because as we go from that starting point to point a we now know that this is down by 2.4 percent and not down by 3 percent similarly when the yield goes down then the price goes up by 3 percent because of duration and another 0.6 percent because of convexity so the overall impact will be up by 
6%. And then given the bond value of 100, you can convert these percentages into actual bond values. But this should illustrate the point of convexity adjustment quite well. Another basic point is that even with the convexity adjustment, we are still talking about an approximation. So the way you can look at it is the first level approximation is to simply use duration. When you add convexity adjustment, then your approximation is much better. But if you want the precise values, then you should use the full valuation method.